I've read more biographies from billionaires that I dare to admit, and they all mention one specific skill as instrumental to the success. In one way, shape or form, they all refer back to one specific skill and they say it is the most important thing that helped them become billionaires. This video is about what is this skill and more importantly, what protocol I built years ago in order to make sure I don't fail at this skill implement this and i can guarantee you'll be miles ahead of everybody else who doesn't even know this is possible welcome back my name is leon castillo founder of submaster peak performance institute for entrepreneurs who help you scale with peak focus clarity self-belief and discipline so if you've been in business for long enough you know how much of a roller coaster it can be one day you're on top of the world the other day you are on the bottom of the ocean depending on the circumstances in your business you feel well but then you feel terrible and it is just an emotional roller coaster that is very hard to learn how to surf this happens to every entrepreneur and mastering your own mental management is the key to long-term success. That is the skill. It's mental management. It's knowing how to deal with the automatic thoughts and emotions that pop into your mind depending on what's going on. As I always say, elite performers are able to stay calm, collected, and in control at all time, irrespectively of what's going on in the outside. They master their internal environment without needing the external environment to be perfect. This is how you can achieve the same. This is a four-step protocol that I built over the years. I can guarantee this is going to work for you, but you need to follow each step in the right order. Otherwise, you're gonna mess it up. Step number one is to stop. I call it stop because every emotion is automatic. It just pops into your mind. You start feeling angry or sad or lonely or whatever without you having consciously summoned that emotion. But now we know, research proved that every emotion has a 90 second cascading effect of brain of neurochemicals, right? You cannot choose not to feel the emotion. When you are fearful, you just uh, segregate cortisol and other neuromodulators that make you feel fear or angry or sad or lonely or whatever. But that only lasts 90 seconds. After 90 seconds, you staying in that emotion is a choice. It is a psychological choice. Your mind decides to run with that emotion because there's no further chemical secretion, which means that the number one step is to stop the emotion because if we don't stop it, then we're gonna be fearful and angry and lonely and we'll have no control. Now, the problem is that you cannot stop the mind with the mind. You cannot tell yourself to relax. You cannot tell yourself, don't be afraid. That doesn't work. And that doesn't work to tell someone else either. So how do you make sure you control your emotional state? Well, through the body, specifically breath work. Breath work is the most effective tools we have as human to regulate our emotional state. And that is because we have a switch in our nervous system, which is the vagal nerve, which goes from the brainstem down to the digestive system and beyond. And we can induce a relaxation response artificially by breathing in a specific manner. And that manner is through what I call physiological psych, inhaling shorter than you exhale. From an evolutionary perspective, in 100,000 years ago, when our mind first evolved, we would only breathe in that way if there were no threats, no predators in the environment. You wouldn't be chilling if you had a tiger in front of you, right? So every time you're hit with that negative emotion, you just pause. And that will short circuit the emotion and make sure that you gain control of your emotional state. Once you're in control of your emotional state, then you're ready for step number two. Step number two is called psychological detachment. It's understanding that thoughts and emotions are automatic. They pop into your mind and you have a choice of whether you pay attention to them or not. Awareness is the ultimate superpower. Being aware that you have a negative emotion or a negative thought and deciding whether you want really to pay attention to it is crucial. This is the skill all the billionaires that I've read a biography from 
end up referencing. In fact, the other day I was reading Bradley Jacobs' latest book. Uh, he is a serial billionaire. He was telling that meditation has been the number one habit for his success, and specifically because it has helped him train his mind to not believe all the BS thoughts and emotions that pop into his mind and be more effective when dealing with them. This is psychological detachment. You're hit with that emotion, you understand what is it trying to tell you, and you let it go if it is not useful. In fact, another book I read a long time ago is Michael Dell's autobiography. I think it's Play Nice But When. He says that compartmentalization, which is another concept from cognitive psychology, it has been key to his success. That compartmentalization means that you are able to not carry your emotions from one context to the other. Let's say you have a major problem at work, some sort of marketing campaign kind of bombed, and you are really pissed off because you wasted a lot of money, then you don't take that negativity to your household because then things can only spiral back the wrong way, right? So you can compartmentalize and show up in a loving manner, chill, calm, in at home, to be an effective father or mother without carrying with you the negative emotion that you had at work, right? Once you are in control of your emotional response and you are psychologically detached from the emotion itself so you can analyze it, you are ready for step number three. Now, before I tell you that step, if you're seeing any value from this video, like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you never miss out on any of the juicy stuff that we will publish every single week. So step number three is what I call stay. So see, the mind has a tendency of catastrophizing and daydreaming. What did that mean? It means that you're always seeking pleasure or avoiding pain, and it's going to interpret reality based on past experiences. So the mind is always tempted to avoid staying in the present moment. Instead, it will look into the past to try to understand what this emotion means and catastrophize what could happen if things stay this way in the future. And that is a natural human tendency. That is what the mind has been designed to do. But you cannot effectively deal with a situation if you're not focused on the present moment, if you don't understand that only in the present moment we can make effective choices. So step number three is to stop the mind's natural tendency towards moving away from the present moment, right? Let's say that indeed you wasted a lot of money on a specific marketing campaign. Well, the mind will naturally think about every fuck up that you had in the past that proved that you're not good enough for this, whatever role, whatever bullshit it tells you, or how your business could go under if you do not learn how to not waste money on marketing. Constantly looking at the past or looking at the future without staying in the present moment, which is the only thing we have. So step number three is to stop and understand what this emotion is trying to tell me and how can I make effective decisions in the present moment, right now, today. Not about the past, not about the future, today, right now, right? And once you understand that this present moment is the battlefield, this is when you need to solve this situation, you're ready for step number four, which to me is a superpower, which is psychological reframing. Psychological framing is your ability to change the meaning to what things mean, right? Reality, as I said always, is neutral. Things are not good or bad, they're just neutral. And your role as a entrepreneur, as a human being, really is to find the best interpretation of every situation that allows you to move forward. This is why some people go through negative experiences and they have PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but always others have PTG, which is post-traumatic growth. Eventually, for most people, it's just a choice. You can reframe every situation under a positive light. So in this specific uh, example of a marketing campaign, you could say, all right, just wasting a lot of money. But instead of saying, I'm just so bad, I shouldn't be managing this. I'm just, you know, I never learned. You say, okay, cool. What specific mistakes did we make? How can we learn from it? What is the lesson? How can I hire or partner with to don't do this mistake again? And this is how you grow, by reframing every situation into a positive. Marketing campaign bomb? Cool. Let's learn how to make it better. Key hire quit? Cool. Let's reassess whether we need the position and how fast can we find a replacement. Whatever happens to you, there's always a lesson. And being able to find a lesson every time is what will make you dangerous and effective and eventually an elite performer. All elite billionaires that I've read a biography from 
end up saying that how they manage their mind and their emotions, it doesn't matter how they call it, compartmentalization, psychological flexibility, it doesn't matter how you call it. What matters is that you stay in control of your emotional response. You're able to look at reality in an unbiased manner to always be effective. This is what the inner game of business is about. This is the thing that truly makes elite performers elite. It's not marketing, sales, or product building. All of those things are consequences of looking at reality in an unbiased manner, of understanding that you have a choice over your mental state and that choice if done effectively and very often will lead to success so this is the protocol right first we stop then we detach then we stay and then we reframe that you have to run every time you're hit by a negative emotion i can guarantee this will make you more powerful than you have ever been. And this is just one of the protocols that we share with the clients. If you want all of them, if you want a specific help to double, triple your business, whatever goal we set together and achieve it by becoming the type of entrepreneur that makes things happen, book a call with us. We'll be happy to audit your current performance, see if it makes sense and work together and take you to the finish line of a fantastic goal if we deem we can work together. And if, in the meantime, check this video because it's going to go deeper into another framework that I believe is super useful for unlocking and sustaining peak performance. Onwards.